Okay, let's get this show on the road. Hello, everyone. Hope you're well. Welcome to another edition of Math 391. Um, waited around for more people to get in, but let's actually just jump into it. We'll get started right away, actually, because we probably have a few more problems than we are going to be able to get through. Hopefully you saw my email earlier, though, about the final. So I got that this morning while I was teaching. And as soon as I finished teaching, I saw the email, I sent it off to you guys. So basically the final, the format will be 13 problems, multiple choice. I believe some of them have that none of the above type answer choice as well. Um, but multiple choice, 13 problems, that's it, two hours and 15 minutes. So you are, you have a time window of about 10 minutes per problem or so, um, which after going through my tests, that should seem like forever, right? So you have a lot less per, per problem, a lot fewer minutes per problem on one of my tests. And I think the problems on my test would be of the same level of difficulty or maybe even harder. So if you're okay or even not so okay on my test, this should be even easier. That being said, um, a friend of mine, Johnny, is also teaching the course this semester, and she taught it in the spring. So she has seen the final in the spring. She taught it in the spring. And so I figured, um, instead of me trying to just come up with my own questions to go through a review, why don't I ask her if I could get her quizzes and tests and go through with you guys as well? So now you're going to see um, something that is a little more focused by someone who did actually teach this when that whole coronavirus thing went down in the in the spring and so no I don't have the final in the spring because I, I didn't teach this class in the spring so um, yeah so I figured it would be really good um, to go through the questions here uh, because this is from an instructor who has seen um, things of this nature before so that is going to be um, Okay, so let me share that one note. Okay, so hopefully you're seeing that as usual. I'm going to turn off the video. And we're gonna move. So hopefully you can see that. This is exam one. Um, so she gave two exams and four quizzes, I think. Um, so let's actually see. I figure that we can go through this together and to make it a little bit more interactive for some problems, I might even ask you guys to do it along with me as opposed to just doing it on my own. So what we will do is, boom, I have launched a poll. You should see that pop up. Tell me the answer choice. So problem one, four choices. It is a word problem, read it. I'll give you guys three minutes here. Go. Once you have your answer, put it in the poll. Oh, and we have one person already has the answer after 45 seconds. Hopefully they didn't randomly guess and they actually got it. So, so far one person thinks it's A, but don't let that influence your decision. Read the problem carefully. One minute down, two minutes to go. We're looking at problem one. Some more people putting in their answers. 13 people in today, five have responded so far. 
with a minute and 10 seconds to go. Let me recopy this down here. So there, there's your problem one. Thirty seconds to go. Eighty-four percent has voted already. So far, A is in the winning, and it's not even close. I have a few answer choices for B and C. Two more people left. Fifteen seconds. Get your answers in. One person left to vote. Five seconds. And we're done. One person abstaining. However, those are the results that you can see me sharing with you here. And as you can see, most people think it's A, 75% think it's A, 8% going with B and 17% going with C, as you can see it there. Um, essentially, well, let's actually see what we have here. So we have a 500 gallon tank capacity. Um, initially has 100 gallons in which are dissolved 50 pounds of salt. So we know that B0 is 100. We know that uh, Q of zero is 50, just by that sentence. Tank is flushed by pumping in pure water, which means C in is equal to zero. And R in is not going to matter, but that is three. The well stored solution is pumped out at a rate of one. So we have R out. R out equals one. Um, C out, we don't know, but that is going to be Q over, um, we know that it's going to be V naught plus R in minus R out times T. And then we just, we're going to plug those numbers in. So our Q prime is going to be C in R in minus Q over V naught plus R in minus R out times T times R out. So that's going to be zero minus Q over 100 plus 2T. And so essentially we have Q prime is equal to minus Q over 100 plus 2T times the R out, which is one. So you're not going to see it here. So I didn't write it there. So we have that. And that looks like A or choice one. Okay, so most people got that correct. Let's actually move on to problem two. So let me paste this down here. Problem two. And for a, a word problem of this type, that is pretty much standard difficulty. So as I mentioned, you would have 10 minutes to do that thing, which honestly should take you one minute, two minutes, three minutes. Um, shouldn't really take you more than that. Uh, let's go with this one. The poll is up. Which of the equations are exact? Maybe two minutes for this one. And I'm going through this with you guys. I, I just, I didn't really look through these exams yet. So we're going to I'm doing it with you. At least I'm waiting on you to do it. And then I do it. And then you guys watch me and tell me if you got the same thing.
I see someone raising their hand. I mean, if you have a question, just put it in the chat. Um, or at least I don't know if that was by mistake. If you think there's more than one answer, I guess you can put that in the chat. Like I said, I don't know. I didn't, I, I'm not doing this. I, I'm going to do this after. So I don't, I don't know if there's more than one answer. I think potentially there could be more than one answer. If you think there's more than one, just put one of them in the poll. And maybe I can add a question in here that says there's more than one answer. Let's take 15 more seconds here. Okay, let's end the polling there. One second. So there you see, at least a 44% believe it's a, hold on. I can't really add a question to the poll that I'm currently using. So let's actually just, let's just continue. Let's actually see if there's more than one answer. I don't know, I didn't, I didn't actually go through this. But uh, let's see. So for the first one, of course, you should remember that to check exact, it would be something like my equals, you don't know, next. Um, in the first one, partial with respect to y would be e to the x, y plus x, y, e to the x, y. Um, your next, so this is for option one, would look like e to the x, y plus y, x, e to the x, y. So those are the same. So one actually works. Check the second one, check option two. My would be cosine of y next would be minus cosine of y, so not option two. If I look at option three, move the chat box out the way here. Um, so at option three, I would check my, which is two x e to the x squared, and next, uh, ba, ba, ba. I would check, well, that would be the product rule. So that would be e to the x squared plus 2x squared e to the x squared. So that's not option three. Maybe option four. My would be e to the minus x minus x e to the minus x and my next for option two I, I i did it in my head but i didn't write it down for option two next was the derivative of cosine y when i bring this over it's minus sine of y don't know why i copied the cosine there 
And so that's cosine of y for the derivative of sine. And derivative of x here is just going to be when I move that over here. That's actually cosine of y. So this one is actually true. Um, OK, so for 4, uh, that is the partial with respect to y of the dx part. Now I'm going to do the partial with respect to x of the other part. That is going to be e to the minus x minus x e to the minus x. And that's the product rule on the first term and then 0. So that looks the same. So all of those look exact. Problem three. Launch a new poll. Let's go with that. Oh, and yeah, someone caught the, if I see in the chat here, the mistake that was on option two. Give you another 30 seconds on this one. Let's end there. Um, turns out more than half the class didn't vote, so I don't know if they're just taking a, a much longer time. Um, but so far, we have B is in the lead. 50% of the people who voted thought that, um, whereas 25% each going with A and C. Let's actually see. So for this one, I would assume there's only one answer. Let's check it out. So if I have x minus 1 times cosine y dy, equals 2x sine of y dx. Almost immediately, you should recognize that that's separable. Um, so I would move the y's to one side. And that's the dy side, the left side, because the dy is on top. So I would divide both sides by sine of y and then divide by x minus 1 as well. Then I'm going to throw in my integration signs 
So now the integral of this, the left side with a u sub, right? Like u equals sine, the du is gonna be cosine. So this is really just ln of sine y on this side. On that side, um, you'd have to, well, I would move the two outside. And so this would look like two times, then what I would do is I would subtract one and add one. Why would I do that? Because now that would simplify to one plus one over X minus one. And so this would be two times X plus LN of X minus one. Let's see, or I, I don't know what form it looks like. So let's keep going. So this would look like a sine of y. I'd raise both sides to the e. So this would be a constant times e to the 2x plus ln of x minus 1. I mean, I could simplify the e to the ln of x minus 1. That just becomes x minus 1. Then I have e to the 2x, well, 2 here. So that becomes x minus 1 squared. Does that fit anybody? Looks like it fits option two. All right, which of the people who voted, most people got that. However, most people didn't vote. So I'm not sure what happened there. Um, hopefully it's not the integration that's giving you trouble because that's, uh, Calc two right there. Let's see the next problem. Problem four. Okay. Suppose y1 and y2 form a fundamental set of solutions to the differential equation, blah. Which of the following statements are true? So I guess this could be a more than one uh, type option. The general solution is that y1 and y2 are linearly independent. They are not a multiple of each other. Their run skin is zero for all values of t. Yeah, so for this one, after I just read it, it there's more than one answer. So this one's uh, another one of those weird ones. So yeah, it's kind of weird to do that polling because the in the polls, I can't have like, at least I don't think so. I don't think I can do something where there's more than one answer.
Okay, so most people are, well, nine out of 13 have answered so far. So let me hold on. Let's end polling. It's 50 50 with one and two. Um, but let me try something else here, just as an experiment. Okay, can you select several options here? Yes. Okay. All right, I'll give you 10 more seconds to get your answers in. Okay, and that's the end. So there are the results. All right, let's actually go through this. So if uh, this is a second order ODE, so we know from the existence and uniqueness theorem that there does exist a unique solution um, that has two parts to it, as long as P and Q are continuous. So we're supposing that we have a fundamental set of solutions. So that's actually true. They will automatically be linearly independent. They will automatically not be multiples of each other. The only one that's false is the last one. The Ron skin would be non-zero. So this one is the only one that's false. So options one, two, and three. So problems like these I see showing up. Um, so um, this would be something like one of those where they says, Choice A would say something like only one is true, and choice B would say only two is true, and then choice C would say only three is true, and then choice four would say something like two and three are true, or or then all three are true, or none of them are true. And so that's how that would actually look. Because being a fundamental set of solutions means being linearly independent. That's a part of the definition because you don't want one to be a multiple of the other because that's automatic and redundant. Linearly independent means that none will be a multiple of the other. And we saw from the existence and the uniqueness theorem that if you have an nth order linear differential equation, homogeneous, then the homogeneous solution is gonna look like C1Y1 plus C2Y2 plus dot, 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 all the way up to CNYN. Um, for the n linearly independent solutions. Well, in general, there will be partial credit, which is why I'm going to ask you guys to send, send in your scans. Um, I'm not sure on that one I would give partial credit, though. Okay, so this looks like one where there's only one answer choice. So what I will do is share the other poll, the one that was uh, only one answer. Okay, go. Which of the following represents the wrong skin of the pair? of linearly independent solutions to this ODE. Give you guys a minute on this one.
Sorry, we have some answers coming in. The rest of you have about maybe 15 seconds to get another answer. Okay, let's stop there. <laughs> the results are really mixed, as you guys can see. Most people thinking it's option four, however. So most people are thinking. Um, so uh, in regards to the question in the first, in the chat, no, you do not need to solve this. A big hint is that they have an arbitrary constant in the wrong skin here, which means they know that you do not know enough to find the exact wrong skin, which means, um, what is the trick here? Does anyone see the trick? It's not a trick, but does anyone see what they should be? Abel's formula, exactly. Abel's formula is what you should be using. So Abel's formula says that if you have y, if you have y double prime plus p of t y plus, uh, Q of T, let's call it Y prime plus Q of T, Y equals zero. Then your Ronskin is going to look like some constant times E to the minus integral of P. So that's Abel's formula. Now, as a general warning, I will mention to you that the person writing the final, the course supervisor, he's very fond of Abel's theorem. Literally every final I've ever seen him written has included stuff about Abel's theorem and about the statement of the theorem and everything. When is the Ronskin zero? When is it not zero? And all sorts of questions about Abel's theorem. Abel's theorem is one of those theorems I think you should know very, very well. And I did put some uh, a problem on Abel's theorem on our test, maybe even a couple. I, th I think on our test and our quiz, I put problems on Abel's theorem. So I would definitely pay attention to those. Chances are something on um, Abel's theorem is coming. Um, it is very, very much liked by the person writing our final. So you should know it. You should know when it applies. And you should also recognize when a question is asking you to use Abel's theorem. Here, the trick is clearly Abel's theorem, which means I don't need to actually find the homogeneous solutions. In fact, we don't know how to find the solutions to something like that without using series, which no, don't use a series to solve this. Um, so yeah, so I would just use that. So this is a constant times e to the minus integral of the p. Now be careful here, notice that this is in standard form. So the first thing I would do is I would rewrite this as y double prime minus, minus four over t y prime plus y equals zero. So now your p, is clearly minus four over t dt. And so now uh, you can, that's just c e to the integral of four over t dt, which is just c e to the four ln t, which of course you can bring that four up because it's an ln, so it's c e to the ln of t to the fourth, and the e's to the ln cancel each other. And so you just end up with c t to the fourth. That's the third one. Uh, can I link the lecture where we went over it? Um, I don't know. I, that's going to be, where did I look at that? Solutions to non-homogeneous ODEs. I'll have to look that up. But there, there was a point where I quoted the entire theorem for you guys. I don't think I labeled the notes Abel's theorem though. So that's going to be uh, Yeah, the R, it's not an Euler equation. So you can actually use that here. Where did I do Abel's theorem? Was when I was doing 
give me facts about solutions. Yes. So there. So it was a, a really long time lecture ago. It was when after I did reduction of order, which I believe was labeled in one of the lectures. Abel's theorem is right here. E to the minus integral of P. And there is it right here. So you'd want to use this one. So facts about solutions. I mean, at this point, what you can do is you can actually just take a picture right now of that because know this theorem like the back of your hand, trust me. <laughs> like he's going to ask something on this for sure. Like he's, he's been writing the finals for this class for years now and without fail, every final this guy has written has had a question on Abel's theorem in that final. Now it does, it's, doesn't always look obvious that it's Abel's theorem. Sometimes you might state something like, he'll give you an example of an equation and say something like, um, how do we know we are guaranteed to be able to find um, constants that will um, fulfill this initial condition? And the question, and the thing was, well, the Ronskin is non-zero and you know, Abel's theorem is gonna, tell, right? There, there's a lot of things that he can ask you all sorts of questions about Abel's theorem. So make sure you know that theorem like the back of your hand. And so you'd see that Abel's theorem will apply here. A lot of people call it Abel's formula. There's another famous theorem by Abel that people call Abel's theorem as well. That was from five. Um, the one about slope field, I'm going to skip. I don't see that coming up. That's never come up. We never ask about slope fields, even though it's really cool and it is applicable. Um, I'm pretty sure we can skip that. Method of reduction of order. To find that. Now, so here's the thing for this one. Um, this has no choices. Now, sure, something online can tell you to do reduction of order and you can do it. However, you should be able to solve this without reduction of order. And that's probably the way that I would go about doing it actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so I wouldn't cheat. I wouldn't use a calculator or anything like that because you don't need it. Um, but there is a nicer way to solve this one. Um, but during test one, you did not know about that method. So reduction of order would be the only way you would know how to do it. If I see something like this on a final exam though, I'm not doing reduction of order. It is a waste of time. Um, does anyone see how you would do this otherwise? Right, it's called Euler's equation. Yes, it's Cauchy Euler equation is like that whole name. But usually when you apply it to a second order, they just call it Euler's equation. So it is an Euler's equation. So this is going to be that R, R minus one thing. So it's three R, R minus one plus two R minus two equals zero. Um, so it's three R squared. That will be minus R minus two equals zero. So I would see if that can factor. Now the question already told us one of the factors. So I know that this should be a one here. And so that looks like it's gonna be a plus two. And so I would get my R is minus two thirds or my R is one. And so now I know the general solution would look like C1 X to the minus two thirds plus C2 X to the one. Um, and this was the solution, the, C, the X was one, the given solution. So the second solution is going to be this guy. That's your second solution. So that's actually an Euler equation and I would actually treat it as such. And that's the closest I'd go to cheating, just doing something by an easier method. Because <laughs> at this point, uh, we know the entire course. So we do know uh, better ways than um, reduction of order to deal with that guy. Um, which of the following is a solution to that ODE? Poll has been launched.
is two minutes enough for this? We have some people with their answers in. In a little under a minute, five people are putting their answers in. We're about 42% engagement. The rest of you get your answers in in the next minute. Still 20 more seconds. Okay, and let's stop right there. There are the results. One person didn't vote, but 92% of those voted voted B, 8% um, voted A. Let's actually see which one it is. So this is definitely jumping into just the characteristic equation. Now, I don't know if this actually factors, but let's see. Um, nine would be what? Three and three would work, I think. And five and five. That get, way I get 15 and 15 um, minus and minus. So I have three R minus five equals zero. That's a repeated root. So R equals five over three, a repeated root. So it's going to be C1 E to the five over three X plus C2 X E to the five over three X. That's this guy. And so now, I mean, you guys are seeing, I'm convinced that these things are going, these problems here are going to be a lot closer to your final than, I don't know about a lot closer, but closer to your final than mine. And so if you're getting through these, that should be fine. And as you can see, really, you're going to be given like roughly 10 minutes on this stuff. And yeah. Yeah, I'd say this is about the same level of difficulty as the final, more or less. Um, let's do this one. So you, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I do expect you guys to be able to do the final in less time than is needed. The only thing that about the final, and I put up the poll so you can start to do this as well. This one's going to take a little bit longer. Maybe I'll give you guys three minutes on this one. The only thing about the final is you won't be able to move forward or backwards in order to do questions. So you can't see the entire final at a time. You do one question at a time, and then you get the answer. You move on. The moment you move on, you won't be able to go back. I don't know why you're asking me why. Those are the rules. I didn't make them up. That's just how it is. <laughs> the final, you can only view one question at a time. You cannot move on forward without losing the other question. Well, 
Well, odds are to prevent cheating, I would assume. Like if you can see the entire exam, you just send all your questions to someone else, I suppose. Which it's harder when you have to wait on an answer. One by one. Normally when rules like that are implied is to reduce cheating. Um, but those are the rules. You, you can only view one question at a time. About a minute and 20 seconds left. So we might not get through everything here, but I'll, I'll leave the other response, the other questions that I didn't get to in the PDF. And so you guys can practice on your own, getting through these guys. And again, there was some confusion, even though it's in the syllabus and I posted it on the class webpage and I mentioned it in class. The final is Thursday, July 23rd. It starts at 5 p.m. It will be in Blackboard. It will be multiple choice. Uh, 20 more seconds. I'll stop right there. We still have like five people who haven't responded. We have about 64% getting their answers in, but we are going to stop there. As you can see from those results, 67% believe the answer is B of those responded. 22% believed it's C, 11% believed it's D. Let's actually do this one. So this one's gonna be a lot longer. There will be problems like this. And while they're not hard, these will probably be the ones that will take the most time because you do have to do a lot of computations here. So we have to find a particular solution, which means we have to find the homogeneous solutions. That's going to re de deal with um, like solving a simultaneous system of equations. Then we have to plug in a number after that. So let's see. Um, we jump in by doing the characteristic. Um, does this factor nicely? No, 25 uh, does not factor nicely. Oh dear, so we would immediately jump into, we're bored mission, and then we jump into the quadratic formula. Uh, minus B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus four AC all over two A. So I'll be 64 minus 100, that'll be 36 negative. So this will give us four plus or minus radical 36 is six, three I. So our solution is going to look like uh, C1 e to the four T cosine three T plus C2 e to the four T sine three T, which means that our derivative of the solution would look like, um, 4c1 e to the 4t cosine 3t minus c1 e to the 4t sine 3t times 3 plus 4c2 e to the 4t sine 3t. Let me get this polling box out the way. Um, plus 3c2 e to the 4t sine 3t. Now we're told that y of 0 equals 2 and y prime of 0 equals minus 2. Okay. So y of 0 equals 2 and y prime of 0 equals minus 2. 
So if I go to the original, plug in zero for t and two for y, I would get two is equal to c1. Then I go to two and plug in zero for t. I would get four c1, that would be zero, that would be zero. This here is a cosine. Da, da, da. Um, plus 3c2 equals minus 2. So that would mean that 4 times 2 plus 3c2 equals minus 2. So that would mean 3c2 is equal to minus 2 minus 8. And so your C2 would be minus 10 over 3. And so this means that your Y is C1, 2E to the 4T, cosine 3T, minus 10 over 3, E to the 4T, sine 3T. And then you plug in Y of pi. So sine of any multiple of pi is 0, so you ignore this part. And then cosine of 3 pi is minus 1. And so this is minus 2 e to the 4 pi, it looks like. So option 2. Right, sine of n pi is zero. It did, we would still have to calculate C2 though, but. Um, oh, you mean uh, but like we didn't need, we didn't actually need to care about this? Yeah, but the problem is when we plug in the pi, we actually needed that term. So we couldn't escape it here actually. We didn't need the C2. Well, knowing, Knowing that this is gonna be zero, yeah, I guess we didn't actually care about C2. You could have actually stopped at C1, left this as just some arbitrary C2, because when you're gonna plug in pi, yeah. So I did waste some time there. We could have been more efficient, but at the same time, like I didn't waste a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, not the best. I don't know if you guys could tell, but I am lacking a lot of sleep today. But even so, like even under those circumstances, you should be able to get through the final in less than 10 minutes per problem. Consider this first order linear equation. What is a suitable integrating factor? And we do have uh, some options. I don't know, 30 seconds here, is that good enough? Okay, this shouldn't take a long time, so I'm just going to actually end here. Um, even though uh, a lot of people didn't respond, uh, share results. As you can see, 80% of those who respond believe it's option two. Uh, of course, we would remember that the integrating factor mu is going to be e to the integral of p, uh, and, and in this case, it's p of x dx. So that's gonna be e to the integral of three over x dx, which is going to be e to the 3 ln of x. Um, of course, you ignore the plus c because anyone you pick is going to be fine. That is e to the ln of x cubed. And so this is just, assuming your x is not zero, um, it's going to be x cubed. I think this, this should have been uh, x greater than zero. 
which makes sense if you're thinking of, uh, but that's the closest of the options here. Let's see, problem 10 is done. Is that the last one? Oh, we have another one. Last problem in the first test. Launching the poll here. Okay, we finally have someone in with an answer just in about 50 seconds. Two people with answers in and it's uh, uh, three people with answers in. So far D is inching ahead. C and D is giving it a run for her money and D gets pulls out in the lead. 60% versus 20% each. The race is not even close ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Let's actually stop there. Uh, shouldn't be too long for that one either. Uh, sharing the results now. Most people so far are thinking it's D, 67%, 17% going with C, and 70% going with E. Let us see what the answer is. Well, remember the existence and uniqueness theorem says we're guaranteed to find a unique solution on any interval where when it's put in standard form, all the coefficients, T, all the coefficients are continuous. Cotangent T. So um, obviously T cannot be equal to one. But then because of, uh, because of division by zero. But also your t cannot be equal to any multiple of pi. Because of the cotangent, which you know is cosine over sine. So whenever your sine is zero, that's a problem. Your sine is zero at every multiple of pi. So pretty much you have um, zero, which is a multiple of pi, pi, two pi, three pi, et cetera, minus pi, minus two pi, et cetera. And then you have the number one. Where does the number one show up? It's here. And we're not allowed to touch any of these points. And, but you are given an initial condition at two and two would show up here. And so this interval is the biggest interval where something is going to work. Um, so that's between one and pi. So that's the answer here, was actually option four. Which most people got. All right. Okay, so that was the first test from this instructor. There is a second test and there are lots of quizzes here as well, um, which as I mentioned, I'll leave them up for you. Uh, now, 
we don't have as much time to go over this as the other one. So maybe I won't do the polling. But uh, I don't have the answers. I don't know if there are some. I'll have to ask. I mean, I'm going through this with you guys as well. So I had a problem like this on my uh, on our quiz, and these guys are series. Now we've been doing these more recently, so I think here it should be fresh in most people's minds. So I'm not sure if I should just go through these because again. Okay, maybe I'll just ask for some uh, suggestions. What is the definition of the Laplace transform? Just tell me that. And I'll assume if you know the definition, you'll automatically know how to compute it because after knowing the definition, it's a Calc 2 problem. So knowing the definition is the hardest thing. <laughs> and then computing it takes some time, but it's not hard. Uh, but you do have to remember the definition from scratch. What's the definition of a Laplace transform? Integral of f of t e to the minus s t dt. Right. So uh, f of s is going to be the integral from zero to infinity of f of t times e to the minus s t dt. So this is from zero to. Uh, so this changes between zero and one, and from one to infinity. So between zero and one, it is t. And with from one to infinity, it is just one. So now um, for here, integration by parts is what I would do. Uh, differentiate that, you get one. Differentiate that again, you get zero. Integrate this, you get minus one over s. Integrate that, you get positive one over s squared. So this times this, this is going to be minus t over s e to the minus s t minus one over s squared e to the minus s t uh, between zero and one plus this one is just going to be, well, minus one over s e to the minus s t between one and infinity. So in the first situation, when I plug in one, I get minus one over s e to the minus s minus one over s squared e to the minus s. When I plug in zero, I would get zero in the first term and I would get minus one over s squared in the second term. If I go into the second one, oh, so this would be plus one over s squared because I'm Fundamental theorem of calculus, subtract the subtraction, those would be positive. Okay, so in the second one, when I plug in infinity, I get zero minus a minus, I would get positive. When I plug in a one, uh, e to the minus s over s. So that is gonna cancel that. And so I really just have, um, basically, this is the answer, this part here. So I go and I look for something that looks like that. So it looks like the answer is factored out the one over s squared. So I would have one minus e to the minus s. And of course here, s is greater than zero for that to converge above. Um, so one over s squared times one minus e to the minus s would be the answer. And that looks like option three. And I guess when you're looking over this, especially if you're not really following what's going on, um, definitely just kind of do the problem again yourself in the PDF. Don't look at the answer. Just look at the blank version of the test that I have up here and uh, try it on your own. 
So here we seek a series solution a n x to the n plus r. You should know that that makes a lot of sense because x equals zero is going to be a singular point. Using the larger root, what is going to be a recursion formula? So uh, we would just jump right in. Um, this is x squared. It's going to be times the second derivative, um, which is um, n plus r times n plus r minus one a n x to the n plus r minus two plus x times the first derivative n plus r a n x to the n plus r minus one minus three x times the original a n let me move the chat box out of the way here a n x to the n plus r equals zero Moving these guys in, this first one, I would have n plus r, n plus r minus one, a n x to the n plus r. Moving this guy in, I would have n plus r, a n x to the n plus r. Moving this guy in, I would have three a n x to the n plus r minus one, uh, plus one. However, I would shift all n's to n minus ones to get this guy to work out. So this is going to be minus three a n, a n minus one x to the n plus r. Just for that part, for the others, I just bring them down, n plus r, n plus r minus one, a n plus n plus r, a n. And so now I just set that inside equal to zero. I would have a n equals three a n minus one all over. Um, I can factor out a common n plus r. Now I would have n plus r minus one plus one. So this would look like three a n minus one over. Um, n plus r squared. So now I just have to find the r, which we can do. Uh, basically, the initial equation is going to look like r times r minus one, or the initial equation of the associated Euler equation uh, plus r equals zero. We know that from the trick that I told you guys in class, so this is r squared minus r plus r. And so here, um, that's just going to be r equals zero. And so that looks like uh, uh, three a n minus one over n squared. What's this one. There's problem two. to problem three. Let's move the chat box out of the way here. Okay, for that given differential equation, know that x equals zero is a regular singular point. Compute the corresponding Euler equation. There are tons of ways that you can do this one. Um, so probably the long way probably a little safer though, um, but it's, it's gonna be a little bit longer. You're going to actually compute the values that would test to see that it is a regular singular point. So you're gonna find P naught, which we will be the limit as X approaches zero of X minus zero times Q over P. So that's going to be X divided by, uh, Undo. can factor out an x squared, we get 3x plus 1. Um, and so that would look like 1. Then you're going to compute your q naught, which would be the limit as x approaches 0 of x minus 0 squared, r over p. 
the limit x approaches x naught of x squared times one half minus five x divided by x squared um, of three x plus one. Um, the x squares are gonna cancel. And if I plug in zero, it looks like I get a half. And so my initial equation would look like r times r minus one uh, plus r plus a half equals zero, which means that that comes from something that looks like x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus one half y equals zero. That does not look like any of the options. Um, however, if I were to multiply by two, that looks like option three. Um, the shorter way, um, what would that look like here? So the short way would be to actually write, because I keep scrolling up, let me just recopy the picture here. The short way is to just ignore everyone that doesn't fit like an Euler equation once you fix the first guy, which means that that's gonna be ignored. Um, and then pretty much here, that would be my R times r minus one. This guy is going to stay. That's r here. That will be ignored. So that's going to be plus a half. And then you you would get the same thing I got here, without having to do the limits. And so here you'd have r squared. Um, anyway, from here you would be able to. Uh, eh, too tired. I'm even losing like dexterity. Okay, so x squared y double prime plus x y prime plus one half y right away. And then you would multiply by two to see that it is going to be the other option. Right. So this is the short way, but it's, 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 it's less safe in the sense that I tell students that the way to get the, the equation to work out is to make sure that the first one is an x squared and then do in the others. Now it turns out there are tons of ways to get this to be x squared. I've seen students who would take my strategy and they're like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna factor out the x squared and then divide everyone by three x plus one. And if you did that, you would get the wrong answer, right? So just knowing that you can look at it and just literally ignore everyone, um, then that's, that's gonna be as well as if there were, if there wasn't an x squared in this guy at all, then you'd have to force it to be an x squared somehow. And I've seen students getting to mistakes doing that. So that's why I say it's it's less safe. But if you really understand the shortcut, um, you can do it, save a lot of time. But I'm definitely going to show you the longer way so that you can't blame me for anything. All right, uh, we see the power series solution to this guy. Um, and as the, the uh, was suggested in the comments, you could always double check your answer. Um, so I would just go take my chances with the short way if I'm running really short on time. But if you're comfortable and you can get to this, if you can see this answer in like 30 seconds, a minute, then why not take another, you know, two or three minutes to do that? You're still under your 10 minute limit. Um, so you might as well just do the check. Um, because remember, once you move on, you can't come back. So you want to really make sure that you're doing the right thing. Um, so power series we want to do for this guy. So this is going to look like power series centered at zero, as it says here. So this is going to look like y double prime minus x squared y double prime plus 2xy prime plus y equals zero. And we're looking for a power series centered at zero. And we want to find the recursion formula. So we have that. Let me move this chat box out of the way. 
we have that just jump in into the series so this is going to look like n times n minus one times a n x to the n minus two minus uh, x squared series n times n minus one uh, a n x to the n minus two plus two x series n a n x to the n minus one plus the series of a n x to the n equals zero. For the first one, um, I would shift all n's to n plus two. So this would be n plus two, n plus one, a n plus two, x to the n. This one, when I multiply in the x squared, it actually are automatically bumps up the power to the desired power, x to the n. Here, when I multiply in by the two x, it is also going to bump up the power to the desired power. And then I'm going to have this. So then put everyone in one big series. It's going to be n plus 2, n plus 1, a n plus 2, minus n, n minus 1, a n plus uh, 2, n, a n plus a n x to the n equals zero. Then I'm going to set this equal to zero and that's going to lead me to the recursion formula, which in this case looks like it's going to be a n plus two equals a bunch of stuff over one n plus one n plus two. What's gonna be that bunch of stuff? Well, it's gonna have a common a n factor and then on the inside, I'm going to have minus n squared plus n plus two n. or it's going to look like a n minus a n n squared minus three n over n plus one times n plus two. Does anything look like that? Oh, we're missing a guy. I, I missed this a n part right here. So there is actually a plus one. Okay, so that's gonna change things a little bit because nothing looked like that. So I double checked. Uh, so this is going to be n squared. And then here, this would be three n, so it'd be minus three n minus one. I don't know if they factored out the negative. I have a box in the way, let me move it out the way here. So this, moved it to the other side of the equal sign and this is positive. Wait, so some of my signs are messed up here. Just make sure. So here I'd have minus n squared plus n, move that over, that'd be plus n squared minus n minus two n minus one. So I think that's uh, this guy. So here they ask for the frequency. I don't think we need to know that though. So yeah, they don't ask for a frequency or period or any of that stuff. So we're not gonna look at that. Let's move on to problem six. Okay, by the way, at this point we've done, I think there was 11 problems on the first one and then we're on the sixth problem here. So we've done 15 problems. We've done more problems than would have been on your final in a lot less time than the final, right? I mean, I believe we started about an hour and 30 something minutes ago. We started about an hour and a half ago and we're already 
almost through two full length exams. And I, I do think this is of comparable difficulty to the final. So should have more than enough time, which is good. Like a, a lot of you can need that win from the final. The final is worth a lot of percentage, which is good because I think it's going to be every, all considered easy in relation to everything that you've been doing this whole semester. So if you can get like close to a hundred on the final, like a lot of you would actually really benefit from that in your, in your overall grade. So let's actually see what this is. Which of the following statements are true? A and B are, I hear, I hear drilling. Someone's starting to drill. A and B are arbitrary contents. Okay, the function y equals this is a part of the particular solution. Oh, well, we'd have to check. So this we do need to do a little bit of work before we can answer this. The characteristic equation here is going to be r to the fifth plus 2r to the fourth plus 5r cubed plus 10r squared equals zero. Um, I can factor out a common r squared. This would be r cubed plus 2r squared plus 5r plus 10 equals zero. I can go further here, I believe, factoring by grouping, common r squared there. Um, I'm left with r plus two, and a common five there. I'm left with r plus two. So now this actually goes into r plus two times r squared plus five. So that, that's the thing. So your homogeneous solution, just to write this down, this would be C1 e to the zero t, because your r would be zero. So, so that's just a constant, plus a constant times t, plus C3 e to the minus two t, plus C4 cosine radical five t, plus C5, sine radical 5t. So that should be what your homogeneous solution looks like. Now, let's see. The function blah is a part of the particular solution. Let's see. It says cosine of 3x, blah, 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 blah. And the answer is no. The characteristic polynomial is this. And the answer is no. However, it's much easier to see that the answer is no here, because that's a fourth degree polynomial. And we have a fifth degree, a fifth order ODE. So that's definitely not going to work. That's obviously no. The roots of the characteristic polynomial are real and complex. And the answer is, yeah, because you get complex numbers from here, which is where the cosine and sine come from. Um, so that's actually true. I have some real solutions, which is the zero and the minus two, and I have some complex solutions. This guy will give you um, plus or minus radical five i when you set this equal to zero. So that's true. The function blah, blah, blah is part of the particular solution. So now you'll notice that those guys are part of the homogeneous solution. So no, they would not be a part of the particular solution. We'd have to multiply, even though they show up here, We'd have to like multiply them by x's until they don't look like this. Um, the function this is a part of the homogeneous solution. And yeah, I have that term there. The general solution is yhyp, where yh and yp to the homogeneous and particular solutions so respectively. Yeah, nothing to calculate there. That is pretty much just something we know as a general concept. The function ax cubed plus bx squared is part of the particular solution. Um, so here we do have a linear term. So our yp would initially have something that looks like ax plus b, but because our homogeneous also has that, I would multiply by x twice. Right, so I would get that. So that's also true. Tab 
was six. Dun, dun, dun. Seven. Copy the general solution. No choices given. Oh, why are they being so mean? Of course, you'll have choices if something that like this comes up. But let's actually just do it from scratch. Um, characteristic equation would look like this. Um, that actually factors, if I'm not mistaken, into that. But who knows at this point, half asleep. So we have a repeated root of minus 3. So our homogeneous solution would look like uh, e, c1 e to the minus 3 t um, plus c2 t e to the minus 3 t. So that's our homogeneous solution. Um, now, you will notice here, this is t to the minus 2 e to the minus 3 t, which means undetermined coefficients is not going to work because t to the minus 2 is not a polynomial which means I'm going to have to do variation parameters here, which means I'm going to need the round scheme. That's going to be e to the minus 6t minus 3t e to the minus 6t plus 3t e to the minus 6t. So it's going to be e to the minus 6t is the Ronskin. And so now I know my particular is going to be given by um, minus y1 times the integral of y2 times g over the Ronskin plus y2 times the integral of y1 times g over the Ronskin. So y1, I would call that my e to the minus 3t. y2 is t e to the minus 3t. My g was t to the minus 2 e to the minus 3t. Let me double check because my memory isn't the best at the moment. Um, t to the minus 2 e to the minus 3t. OK. And then the Ronskin is e to the minus 60 dt plus y2, which is t e to the minus 3t times y1 e to the minus 3t times g t to the minus 2 e to the minus 3t over the Ronskin e to the minus 60 dt. All right, let's start cleaning these guys up. Those guys all cancel. So this just becomes e to the minus 3t times the integral of, that's going to look like 1 over t. Um, for this one, all of those guys cancel, which means that is just going to look like, um, I'm going to factor this out minus uh, t e to the, well, let, let me actually just write the integration down first. I'm doing the integral in my head. Not something I should be doing at this, under these circumstances. Okay. So there we go. Um, doing the integrals. This is ln. Doing this integral. It's going to be the integral of t to the minus 2 is minus 1 over t. Add one to the power, divide by the new power. That's where the negative sign is going to come from. The t's are going to cancel. That's going to give us e to the minus 3t. Now, of course, um, e to the minus 3t is a part of your homogeneous solution. So you would ignore this part here. And that's going to be, the, this guy left over here is going to be a part of your yp. So you go back, uh, your home, it says general solution. So your homogeneous is what you'd write down first. So it's y equals c1 e to the minus 3t plus c2 t e to the minus 3t minus e to the minus e to the minus 3t ln of t. So that's that one there. So um, you should recognize from this, undetermined coefficients won't work.
Um, let's move on to the next one. Where are we? So that was problem seven. Let's look at problem eight. Compute the general solution. We saw an equation like this earlier. Um, notice here it doesn't ask you to use reduction of order because this was a second test for the class. So this actually comes down to um, Euler's equation. R times R minus one plus three R minus 35 equals zero. So this would give me R squared plus two R minus 35 equals zero. Uh, try to factor that. Uh, I think a seven and a five can work. Uh, make it a plus seven and a minus five. That's going to get me to that positive two. So I would get R equals minus seven and R equals five, which means my general solution is going to look like C1X to the minus seven plus C2X to the fifth. And does anything look like that? This guy looks like that. So that's a 10 minute problem, but shouldn't be a big deal. Okay, so this one, again, it's another Euler's equation. So I guess um, you guys will know how to do this one as well. R times R minus one minus five R plus nine equals zero. This would mean that you have R squared minus six R plus nine equals zero. This means you get R one and two is a repeated root of three. And then will there be more of what in the next two days? Review sessions? No, today's the, the day. So Thursday is your final, and I'm not doing a review session tomorrow. Um, so here we now know that this is going to look like C1 X cubed plus C2 X cubed ln X. We're told that your X is greater than zero, so that means it works in the ln. Um, we're also told that Y of one equals minus two, Y prime of one equals blah, blah, blah. I mean, for you guys, I, I, I don't think you need more than one review session. For my other class, yes, because their final is much bigger. It's much larger, much heftier. You guys are only doing 13 problems over two hours and 15 minutes. And the level of difficulty is, is going to be less than that of the class, traditionally speaking. I, I think you guys will be fine. Um, Follow the advice I gave you, go over all the review problems I gave you, make sure you're testing yourself correctly, not just watching people sol doing solutions, but actually doing them on your own, timing yourself while doing them, making sure that you're getting them right as a matter of routine. The final is, should be very easy, assuming you've been following all my advice up to this point. Um, yeah, so in this case here, um, my Y prime is going to look like 3C1X squared plus 3C2X squared LN um, plus C2X squared. And then um, here, if I do Y of one equals minus two, that would mean minus two is equal to C1, well, it's just C1 because ln of one is zero. Then if I do y prime of one equals minus four, this would mean that three C one, uh, ln of one is zero, so this would be plus C two equals minus four. So this would mean that minus six plus C two equals minus four. So your C two is going to be two. And so you can uh, plug that in. C1 is minus two. The 
guys are. Um, oh, now we have to put, he said plug, plug in y of e. Okay. Um, this means that y of e, this is going to look like uh, minus 2e cubed plus 2e cubed ln of e, which is 1. So y of e is actually 0. Whenever regrade requests are done, you will get an email saying so. So if you didn't get an email, it means it's not done. It's the last problem. particular solution to this. So this one uses undetermined coefficients. So there's nothing here on, well, there was on a Laplace transform, but there's nothing here on, as you will notice, Fourier series or um, the heat equation, which I believe uh, she gave her second test before covering those topics. So that's why it's not here. So um, look over the problems that I did in my class and what I gave you on my quiz and tests. Um, if you want to test your knowledge there. Um, but this is going to be the last one. This is also not a big deal. This one is going to be undetermined coefficients because it's like a it's like a polynomial. So it's r squared plus r equals zero is going to be that. You're going to have your character's equation being that. You're going to get r equals zero or r equals minus one. This is going to give you that your homogeneous solution is going to look like c1 plus c2e to the minus x so now you go and you start with your yp you want your yp to look like this guy but not like the not like the homogeneous solution so that's the equation so someone tell me what the yp should look like Okay, so you start with ax squared plus bx plus c. And are we good with that? Right, you have to multiply by x. <laughs> I don't know why you put that in all caps, but yes, you have to multiply that by x because it's going to overlap with this homogeneous solution. So. So this would overlap with that. So you'd have to multiply that by x. So you would take your yp to be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx. Doesn't overlap with anybody. Then of course you'd find your yp prime. And your yp double prime. Then you plug into the ODE. So this would mean that 6ax plus 2b plus y prime 3ax squared plus 2bx plus c equals x squared plus 2x. At this point, I would just uh, group like terms. So the x squares on the left side, I have 3a times x squares. And that's it. Um, then I group the x's on this side, so I have six a's. Aren't you counting the two x in our yp? What two x? I, I don't know what you mean. Aren't we counting the two x in your yp? What do you mean?
it's already counted for. It's here, right? The, the, the right side is a quadratic, x squared plus 2x. And I wrote down the general form of a quadratic. x squared and 2x, they're in the same family. They're both polynomials. So my one quadratic, ax squared plus bx plus c, covers them both. Had you done a separate dx plus e, it doesn't matter because you just combine that with the bx and the c, all right? So, all right. So now here to group the x's, I have six a's, x's plus two b x's. That's done. Now the constants, I have two b plus c. So now this automatically gives us that 3a must be equal to 1. It gives us that 6a plus 2b must be equal to 2. And then it gives us that 2b plus c must be equal to 0. So this tells me that my a must be a third. This one tells me that 2 plus 2b must be 2 which means that my B is zero. This would tell me that my C is zero because my B is zero. And so if I go back to my YP, that means that my A is a third. So that means YP is equal to one third X cubed from below. So now I go back and I plug that in. So this means my general solution is going to be C1 plus C2 e to the minus x plus one third x cubed e to the minus x. Oh, they actually only asked for the yp. Jeez, didn't have to even go back to that. OK, so yp is this. I believe that's uh, that's all I have for the test. I have some uh, quizzes here. Yeah, these still don't have the uh, four uh, Fourier series and the heat equation. So again, just. And it, it, when it comes to Fourier series and heat equation, I mean, they're, they're, they usually don't ask computational questions about that. Um, so that's just going to be, they usually don't ask conceptual questions about that. So if those guys show up, they're gonna be computational. So just knowing how to compute them, you will be fine. As well as, Is there a link to the solutions for 2017? Because if there isn't, I don't have it. If there is a link, then I can make it live, but otherwise, no. I, I also believe that I did get an extra final, which I would, um, I'm going to post on the website. So I do have an extra final for you to practice. I don't have the solutions for that one, though. A final from 2019. I'll also post on the class webpage. Okay, I'll check. If I do have the solutions to the 2017, I'll put that up as well. Um, and then I'll also include a 2019 past final. And so to review for Fourier series and the heat equation problems, I would just do the ones from that. And again, um, best uh, practice is just to do the finals under timed conditions. Um, on, a, on an actual final, you do have roughly 10 minutes per problem. Um, I think they would be even a little bit harder than a multiple choice test would be. So if you can do those, then you're good. Get, if you can get through the finals, how I was asking you to get through the finals, you are you will be over prepared. 
And you do want to be overprepared, especially if you haven't been doing so well in the class so far. Um, being overprepared is a good thing. Um, so make sure you time yourself, go through those finals, go through these quizzes. I'll leave them in the PDF. Um, and I'll make sure you have those. I, I don't have the answers for these. I was literally doing these along with you guys. I got, the, I got these tests a little earlier today. So the only answers I have are here. Uh, but we are going to kind of wrap up there. All right, so okay. So that's it. It's been a while, and I think we're done here. So it's been a whirlwind of semester. I had some fun teaching the lectures. I don't know how much you thought thought of it, but we are going to be. Jupiter grades is where you're, you should be looking at for your report card, yes. Because the grades on Gradescope are inflated because it has the, it, it counts the, or I guess it would work out to be deflated because it, it counts the bonus points in the total. Whereas when I transfer it over to Jupiter grades, I don't. So your grades in Jupiter grades would be slightly better than your grades on Gradescope. Um, but Jupiter grades is what your report card is. So you should look there. All right. So um, I think that's it, guys. So we did a lot of review today. We went through two full length exams. We pretty much spent, it's a little less than two hours right now. We spent about one hour and 50 minutes on all this stuff. And we had the, um, We did more problems than you would have to do. I mean, we did, what, 21 problems in this time? You only have to get through 13 of them. So, And while we didn't do anything on Fourier series or on the heat equation, um, those guys are going to be computational. I think that's it. I think we will, we are good. Um, a quiz is already dropped as far as I know. It should already be in your Jupiter as being dropped. Once you have at least the three quizzes up there, it'll automatically drop one of them. Okay, that's it guys. I'm probably gonna take a nap before my next class because I'm very tired. Okay, it'll be fine. I think it, you guys on average are in a good position for the final. So I don't think it's too much to worry about, but at the same time, don't sleep on it. Be over prepared, go through the, the practice as I described, you should go through them to make sure that you're on top of things for the, the final. Um, as I as is mentioned, you only have 13 problems. So the split, you get one wrong, it's gonna give a huge dent in your answers in the first place in your grade. So you do want to make sure that you're getting um, pretty close to the answers. Okay, that's it. We will stop there. You guys are welcome. And I guess I'll see you guys on Thursday. I'll send you any information that you need to know about the final, but you know the basics already. It's gonna be on Blackboard. So definitely make sure you can log into Blackboard and you see our class, that's for sure. It's going to show up on Thursday at 5 p.m. It will show up in the left panel, right where you see those labels like contents and, and announcements and blah, blah, blah in that left menu panel. There's going to be a, 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 a thing that pops up that says Math 391 final or somewhere. You click that, you'll see the instructions that I emailed to you. So if you've already read those instructions, you won't need to read the instructions. It'll be the same instructions. And then you just do the, do the final. That being said, let's actually get out of here. Stay safe, everyone. Have a good day. Good luck with your studies. And I will see you guys on Thursday, I guess. Um, I will also have a Zoom room open that I'll send you guys the link for during the final. So just in case you have any issues or any questions that you need to reach me, you'll be able to just log into Zoom and message me there. Um, I will see you guys in the next one. Ciao.